Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 67 of this series. The series is based on my book Manual of Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I am Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find my book on Amazon at the link below. Today we are starting chapter 9. This is a new chapter. It is on metabolic alkalosis. Part 1 is definition, diagnosis, and incidence of metabolic alkalosis. So what is metabolic alkalosis? Metabolic alkalosis is a blood pH over 7.45. Why is it over 7.45? We have a primary increase in serum bicarbonate. We said acidosis, when it's metabolic, it's a primary decrease in serum bicarbonate. In metabolic alkalosis, we have a primary increase. Now, when we have bicarbonate accumulation, we are going to have respiratory compensation. So we are going to have a secondary increase in PaCO2. Okay, metabolic alkalosis is very common, especially in critically ill patients. How do we get chronic metabolic alkalosis? Well, we need two things. First, we need generation of metabolic alkalosis, and that happens if we gain alkali or if we lose acid. I said before that gaining alkali is equivalent to losing acid and vice versa. Now, that's not enough because the kidneys will get rid of that excess alkali. So you need to maintain that metabolic alkalosis by increasing tubular reabsorption of bicarbonate, meaning the kidneys will fail to do their job. So you need two things. First, you need a mechanism. You need something whereby you are generating alkali. Then you need the kidneys to fail to excrete the bicarbonate. Now, if you ask anyone what is the most common acid-based disorder in hospitalized patients, probably they will say metabolic acidosis with all the sepsis and all that. Actually, it is metabolic alkalosis, not acidosis, especially in a surgical critical care unit. Mortality increases as pH increases, meaning the higher pH, the higher the mortality. As I said before, the only way to make a diagnosis of an acid-based disorder is by getting arterial blood gases. Why? If you have a high serum CO2, if you have a high serum bicarbonate, you can either have metabolic alkalosis or you can have metabolic compensation for respiratory acidosis. So you obtain an arterial blood gas and now you have a pH of over 7.45. So you have alkalemia. Alkalemia can be either due to metabolic alkalosis and in that case serum bicarbonate will be high, or it can be respiratory alkalosis, and in that case, the PaCO2 will be low. So once you have blood gas, it's easy to make that differentiation. In metabolic alkalosis, arterial bicarbonate is over 28, while the venous total CO2, this is what you get on a BMP a basic metabolic panel, would be above 30 millimoles or 30 milliequivalents per liter. As I said before, gain of alkali is equivalent to loss of acid, and either way you get metabolic alkalosis. In metabolic alkalosis, serum bicarbonate is high, and the respiratory compensation will be PaCO2 will go up. Now, if they're going in the opposite direction, meaning the serum bicarbonate is high and the PaCO2 is low, then you have alkalemia from respiratory alkalosis and metabolic alkalosis. So you have two type of alkalosis. Therefore, a simple acid-based disorder is due to a change in either the PaCO2 or the serum bicarbonate. And then you have appropriate metabolic or respiratory compensation. Now, when you have two or three acid-based disorders simultaneously, this is what we call a mixed acid-base disorder. Usually when we have metabolic alkalosis, we have hypokalemia and hypochloremia. And the reduction in chloride, this hypochloremia, is usually not associated with hyponatremia. An ion gap is slightly elevated in metabolic alkalosis, and this is due to an increase in the negative 
a charge of plasma proteins. Now, to summarize, in simple acid-base disorders, serum bicarbonate and arterial PaCO2 move in the same direction. So in metabolic alkalosis, both move up, and in metabolic acidosis, both move down. Now, in mixed acid-base disorders, they move in opposite directions. How do we calculate the respiratory compensation in metabolic alkalosis? After we make the diagnosis, we calculate the respiratory compensation to determine if it's appropriate. So for every one millimole per liter or one milliequivalent per liter rise in serum bicarbonate above 24, the PaCO2 rises by 0.6 millimeter of mercury. Now, we said with bicarbonate, millimoles per liter is the same as milliequivalents per liter. You can also say for every 10 millimole per liter rise in bicarbonate, you have a 6 millimeter of uh, six a millimeter of mercury rise in PaCO2. So the PaCO2 equals 40 plus 0 0.6 times bicarbonate minus 24. So if we have a bicarbonate of 40, then the serum bicarbonate has risen by 40 minus 24 by 60 millimoles per liter. So the PaCO2 should rise by 0 0.6 times 16 or 9.6, approximately 10. So 40 plus 10 is approximately 50. Another quick way to determine the PaCO2 is by adding 15 to the bicarbonate. So if the uh, bicarbonate is 40, the PaCO2 should be uh, 55. Um, this is obviously not, not very uh, accurate. Metabolic alkalosis is associated with a rise in PaCO2, meaning it is associated with alveolar hypoventilation. This takes minutes to hours to occur. The correction in pH is never complete, so you don't have pH normalization. If you have, then you have probably a mixed acid-based disorder. Probably you have metabolic alkalosis and respiratory acidosis if the pH is normal. Now, keep in mind that in metabolic alkalosis, PaCO2 is rarely above 55, and don't expect it to be in the normal range. Now, an example of both metabolic alkalosis and respiratory acidosis is a patient with COPD who has chronic respiratory acidosis. And then you are diuresing the patient, so the patient developed metabolic alkalosis. So now they have both disorders, chronic respiratory acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. Now, on the blood gas, uh, you always have this value base excess. So it's helpful to know what it is. So when we have an arterial blood gas sample, the standard conditions, the normal conditions, are a pH of 7.40, a PaCO2 of 40 millimeter of mercury, a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Now, if you meet all these conditions, a base excess is going to be zero, zero millimole per liter. So a base excess is defined as the amount of strong acid in millimole per liter that is needed to be added to one liter of fully oxygenated blood in vitro to return our current sample of ABGs to the above defined standard conditions. Now, Base excess is negative in metabolic acidosis because if someone is acidotic, obviously you don't need to add acid to return to normal condition. And it is positive in metabolic alkalosis. The normal range is negative 2 to plus 2 millimole per liter. For example, an ABG sample in a patient with severe metabolic alkalosis shows pH of 7.55, PaCO2 of 49 millimeter of mercury, bicarbonate of 38. Now this patient has a base excess of 14 millimole per liter, meaning if we take a liter of this patient's blood and the liter is fully oxygenated, we need to add 14 millimoles of hydrochloric acid to return this sample to the standard condition, meaning to lower the pH to 7.40, to lower the PaCO2 to 40 at a temperature of 37.
Metabolic alkalosis, like I said, is the most common acid-base disorder in a patient in the intensive care unit. And that was shown in a large Norwegian study, a huge uh, a number of patients. Um, in this study, alkalosis was found either as a simple or a mixed acid-base disorder, including patients with post-hypercapnic alkalosis. Uh, those patients had COPD and are on mechanical uh, ventilation. A prospective study enrolled 293 general surgical patients. Postoperatively, 50% developed metabolic alkalosis, so very high. Other acid-base abnormalities were not common. Metabolic alkalosis persisted in 31 patients and carried a very high mortality of 32%. I'm going through these studies really fast. Uh, there are more details in the book. I provide the references, as you can see. Another study analyzed over 13,000 samples from hospitalized patients. Again, metabolic alkalosis was the most common, 51%, followed by respiratory alkalosis, 29%, respiratory acidosis, 27%, and finally, and this is not what you would expect, metabolic acidosis, 12%. Another study by Anderson in 409 medical and surgical patients showed that mortality was 48.5% in patients with a pH of over 7.6. So metabolic alkalosis is associated with high mortality. The higher pH, the worse the mortality. Now, I'm going to end here, and in the next lecture, we are going to talk about the pathophysiology of metabolic alkalosis. See you then.